Today at OpenMRS University, we're going to be talking about how to create a module um, in sort of the latest way for open in OpenMRS uh, using Maven, using the Maven archetype, and sharing it uh, on GitHub. And also, this is the first time I'm attempting to both record using uh, Adobe Connect and using Camtasia here. So hopefully, you'll be able to download this both ways. Um, so to everyone who's listening, please feel free to interrupt with questions if I do anything that is unclear or, or, or you want to know why something is the way it is. So as the example here, I'm going to, we're going to start by creating a new module um, that does, well, that does something. Um, so The, the easiest way to create the structure for a module in OpenMRS is using the module Maven archetype. Um, and there's a fair, well, there's some number of prerequisites here, which I'm not going to go through right now. But basically, you have to have Maven installed, and you have to have um, uh, the OpenMRS Maven plugin repository configured, or the ne our Nexus repository configured, um, and so that's described on this wiki page about using the module Maven archetype. But I'm just going to skip down to actually using the module wizard. So first off, I want to go to a directory where I want the output of this to be. Where, where basically where I want to create the new module. Um, and so in my case, here. So it'll, it will be created as a subfolder in the folder I'm in now. All right, so I will say then MBN module wizard generate. Maven will do some checking to make sure it has the latest version. All right, so at this point, it starts asking me a number of questions. Um, and you can see these documented on the wiki page. Um, but for the most part, they're pretty straightforward. Um, so what group ID do you want? Um, I actually strongly recommend, at least for the moment, you leave this at the default value of org.openmrs.module because there's a bug in the archetype if you cho choose something else. Um, you then give the name. So I'm just going to, let's see, what will I call this? University Maven and Git. Um, that, hopefully, I never have to type again because I won't remember it. So that's, that's the module ID. Um, what version I would like it to start out as, and 1.0 snapshot is fine by me. Um, example, so what, what is the module name what, written out? Example of um, Maven module, we'll just say Maven and Git module example. Um, and a description uh, example of building a module with Maven and sharing it in Git on GitHub. Um, you can choose what you want as the module author. I'll leave that as myself. And choose what OpenMRS version you want to depend on. And I'll leave that as 1.8.2. Um, do I want to add an admin page link? Sure. Do I want a service layer? I'm going to say no. Your module probably will need that, but for this example purpose, I don't really. Do you want to depend on another module? I will also say no. And is this all correct? I say yes. So, all right. 
so this has hopefully successfully created um, something in uni mbn git. Great, it has. Um, <coughs> so, I, so I've now created that. Um, I'm now going to, for what it's worth, say git init to actually cr uh, set this up as a git repository. Uh, before I do that, just ls, you know, what's here, there's the API and the OMOD subprojects, and then there's the main pom.xml. So I will do git init. And um, I will then check in sort of all of this as uh, in an initial check-in. Offhand, does anyone remember what that is? Is that git commit dash a will automatically add everything? Um, so it'll show, I mean, I see that all of these, the API, OMOD, and pom.xml are here. So git commit dash a dash m um, initial check-in. see if that actually works. Uh, whoops, I have to add everything manually. Well, uh, I won't do that yet, then I'll, I'll save myself some trouble and do that in my IDE. Okay, so anyway, up until this point, I've run the Maven archetype and I've created the skeleton of, of my module. So what I'm going to do next is import that into Eclipse so that I can well, so that I don't have to do stuff at the command line. So here I've got Eclipse open here. Um, and what I'm going to do, and sorry, the, the win menu shows up on my other monitor, but I'm going to say File Import. And I want to import an existing Maven project. Um, in the past, you may have used checkout Maven project from SCM, from source code management, but in this case, I've already created it. It's on my machine. I'd like to import, leave it, leaving it where it is in that folder, I would like to import it into the Eclipse workspace. Um, so the root directory here is git repositories, uni, maven, git. Um, actually, before I do that, I realized I want to rename this. Um, going back a step. I want to rename you this uni, maven, git to openmrs dash module dash example dash uni, maven, Git. So normally you would want to use the tr the the standard naming conventions openmrs dash module dash and then the module ID. In this case, um, since this is a development example, I'm adding example in there. Okay, Th that this is going to save me some headache when I actually export this to GitHub. Um, it will give well, it'll give it the right name. Okay, now. Where was I? So documents, git repositories, open up. All right, so I choose this as a root directory, the thing I just created. Um, I want to import all three of the projects. Um, I'm going to add this to my university working set and say next um, and finish. I will let it deal with um, Maven plugins in the standard way. All right, so we have now imported these um, these three projects into into Eclipse. So um, the next thing I'm going to do, what I so what I had not done, well, actually, sorry, the next thing I'm going to do is tell it that. The, I want these all to be shared using Git. 
So I will right click here and I will say team share project um, using Git. And this is something that is much, much nicer than the way we had to do things with Subversion. Um, and I guess this has to do with the eGit plugin for Eclipse being <laughs> better, I suppose. Um, this box here, which is checked by default, I think, use or create repository in parent folder of project. Um, I, I checked that. Basically, the point is that there's already a Git configuration here. Um, there's already sort of a Git repository on my machine, so I will let it use that. I don't need it to. I don't need Eclipse to create the Git repository itself. So I'll say finish here, and um, you'll notice that these icons just change to have um, their. Well, yeah, to have this sort of storage icon or whatever it is. Okay. So the next thing I can do now, and this is what I was too lazy to Google and figure out how to do just before, is I can team commit, um, and I can commit almost, so I'm going to select almost everything. I don't actually want to check in the Eclipse project files or settings files or class path files but everything else, the pom.xmls, um, everything in... Uh, I also don't want to check, in fact, what's in the target directories. I don't want to check that in either. Um, and I suppose I might have been slightly faster to um, ignore these first before, rather than checking and unchecking, but... Um, almost done with it this way. Okay, so basically I'm going to check in all of, well, all of the files that are not Eclipse specific or are not part of the tar target, which is part of the build. Um, I will check those in with the message initial commit. So that's done. Um, I will then use the navigator view here Um, and just so I can see all of these hidden files and say team ignore on the dot project file um, and then within API well okay so I also want to ignore settings same goes within the API folder and target and class path and project. Um, doing this this way, uh, telling, doing the ignore via Eclipse creates um, extra dot get ignore files in each of these folders. My own sort of preference is to do just a single one at the top level, and if I were really doing this module for real, I would probably go back and modify things by moving them that way, but I don't really think it matters in any meaningful way. So now that I have made that change, uh, told it to ignore everything, I will do a commit, and hopefully it should only show me three files it's going to commit. Yep, the three git ignores. Um, ignore Eclipse specific files and uh, target. And finally, um, all right, I can go back to the Project Explorer now. Um, finally, I'm going to create a new file in here in the root directory called readme.txt. Um, so that, that which is sort of the convention for things you share on GitHub. Um, and I'll say this is an example of using the Maven module archetype. Um, and let's just get a link to that.
to create, and that's the thing I'm going to add, module, and sharing the module on GitHub. Okay, um, I, sorry, I noticed that earlier um, Roger had asked the question, what's up with team share? Um, basically, you know, the team menu in Eclipse, or the team context menu, I guess, um, right, if I right click here and say team, then everything under there has to do with, um, has to do with, sh well, sharing, um, has to do with sort of source version control, source code version control. Um, so now that this module is shared, quote unquote, shared using Git, um, I have all the Git commands available to me here. Um, if there's a module that is not shared yet, um, and I go to team share, or if I go to team, it'll show me just um, a few, smaller number of options. Basically, it'll allow me to set up the sharing, set up the source code version control for this project. Um, I actually don't know what the distinction is between this share project singular and share projects plural. Um, I've always just used share project singular, even if I have multiple ones selected. So um, that has worked. And um, so in the case of subversion, in the old way, I guess, when you did share and you share subversion, then what will be done is your code will immediately be uploaded to a subversion repository because those are sort of always up in the cloud somewhere rather than being on your local machine. But Git is different. Um, in the Git case, you already have the repository locally. Right? That's what happened when I did git init. At the command line, it created the Git, repo a Git repository on my own machine. And all the doing team share in Eclipse would do is um, basically find that existing Git repository and t let Eclipse know about it. Um, so, okay, so I'm going to then all right, so why do I have a modified file? Uh, the README. So let me also team commit um, added README file. All right, so at this point, I have a local Git repository on my own machine. Um, it has a little bit checked into it, but it doesn't have, it's not shared anywhere, it's just on my own machine. Whoops. Um, okay, and yep, nothing commit to commit, everything's checked in. So what I'm going to do now is go up to GitHub and uh, share this module on GitHub. So I'll go to, so I'm going to go to my account there, github.com slash djazieri. Um, if in practice, at this point, you probably, assuming that this is a module that you would want to share with the OpenMRS community, um, you would probably want to send an email to the code at openmrs.org mailing list um, saying what module ID and name you would like to reserve, basically. Um, And, but so in this case, since this is just an example and it's not something I'm going to share, I'm going to just do this within my own repository. Um, I could share this on the OpenMRS repository if I if I wanted to, or but to do that, I would need to email the code mailing list. So I'm going to say here new repository, um, and I guess I called it OpenMRS module example um, you are the uni maven git is that what i called it yes okay so much for memorable name short and memorable names okay and this is um example of creating an open mrs module with the maven 
archetype and sharing it on GitHub. All right, so I will create this repository. Okay. Um, so the next thing I want to do is, since I've already, so GitHub give, conveniently gives me a couple of um, suggestions for how to actually create this mod, how to, how to check in code to this repository that I just created at this URL. Um, in this case, I've got an existing repository, so I just need to push it. Um, so, I'm going to say, I'm going to basically, well, I was going to say I'm going to type this exactly as written, but you know what, I'm going to copy and paste it. If I can select this properly, copy this. Um, git remote add origin and then the U this URL. So basically I'm adding to to my git repository on my machine I'm adding a remote I'm telling it that there's a remote repository called origin and this is its URL. Um, and then I'm going to do this next line here, git push dash u origin master. And Roger asks, what is the dash u? Because our instructions on our wiki page don't say that. That is a good question that I don't know the answer to offhand. I've always just done this because I, at this point, always copy exactly what, um, what git says. But let's say git help push. Uh, what is dash u? Huh. Did, did I just miss it? I didn't see dash u. I wonder if it has to do with upstream or something like that. Um, well. Alright, git push u origin master. Oh, I don't know why it doesn't remember my username and password. Uh, Hopefully I can remember them. Um, darn it. Whoops. seems like I did remember my password. Um, so Burke and Roger say that git push dash u, dash u is the equivalent of dash dash set upstream. Basically I guess that means that that makes um, I guess it sets that place to be your sort of default upstream repository. Yeah, it says the default reference used by like git pull and other commands if you don't provide that argument. Okay. Um, and particularly that argument was what was it? it was git push origin dash u origin master. So the dash u refers to origin to the remote called origin. It makes that the default upstream for, well, for other times. So I've now done that push, so I ought to be able to um, refresh this over here. Yes, and I see, well, I see everything that I would expect. Um, I see a bunch of files here. If I check the history, I see that all, th even though I just did the push right now, all three of these commits are all still here as separate commits. 
um, because basically my, well, my repository's history got copied up there. Um, and Roger asks, so, so origin is not a special name. It's the dash U that makes it special. And I think that's right. I hadn't quite realized that until just now, but yes. There's nothing special about the remote name of origin. It, it is the dash U that tells Git I want to treat that as the default. Okay, so at this point I've got, I have um, created some code, I have um, made some minor tweaks to it, and I have shared it on GitHub. Um, I'll what I will do, well actually I, yeah, and I've also made sort of multiple changes, um, just to make, uh, to show an example of this, or to show an example of more workflow, let's say I want to make, um, a modification here. Um, somehow let's say in um, let's say in my message.properties file I want to change the title of this um, Maven and Git module example instead of and get rid of the extra module sure why not um, I'm going to then do a team commit. Um, well, before I before I do that, I'm going to um, here do a git status at the command line. It'll show you know you can see that I could do all these git commands at the command line. In this case, I've got one modified file. I can do um, you know git commit dash a and give it a message or uh, more likely, in, for my own workflow, I'm going to do team commit and just do this from the through my IDE and say, um, you know, fixed module title in messages dot properties. Um, so that is now committed. Um, I can then do you know, git status again. Um, there's nothing to commit, but it shows me that my branch is ahead of origin master by one commit. So at this point, I could do git push at the command line, or in Eclipse, I can say team push, uh, push to upstream. And it shows me that it has pushed this one provision. Um, and just to point something out, uh, the workflow that I've followed here has left me with the setup where um, I've got a module up here on GitHub, and I have a clone of this module, since it's sort of my own module, I have a clone of it on my own machine. Um, and that's a little different than what would happen if this were someone else's module that I wanted to contribute to. And in that case, you know, typically I would find their module elsewhere in um, elsewhere on GitHub, somewhere other than under my own account, and I would fork it to my account and then clone that. And then, you know, the code that I write in for that module contributions I want to make, I would need to send pull requests to the owner so that they can sort of. Uh, merge them into their module as they see fit. In this case, I have a direct clone of it on my machine, so any changes that I make, commit, and push will show up directly here um, in, in sort of the main repository. Um, Jeremy says that he has started a question section on the Etherpad. Um, and one of those questions is, is it always recommended to do the fork branch pull request method when working on tickets using Git? Um, 
let me just give the short answer now, which is that, yes, um, um, if you are working on your own module, then uh, that you are the owner of and it sort of lives in your Git repository or whatever, or or alternately, if you ha you're the sort of primary developer and um, and well, as the owner, you trust yourself. Basically, you can choose to do this or not. If you're the owner of a module, you can make changes directly. I mean, you can basically clone it directly to your machine. You can make changes that way and commit them directly, and that's sort of that's your prerog prerogative as a module owner. Um, otherwise. It, it is recommended that you do, you, you create your fork, you, um, if you're going to work on a ticket, like let's say um, I was working on a module, well, yeah, let's say I was working on a module, like on the HTML form entry module, and there's a particular feature request, so I would probably create a branch, a local branch, well, uh, create a branch in my fork, um, and you know, with the with the name of the ticket as the branch name, and I would do my work there, commit it, and then submit a pull request on that branch for Mark to pull into the main HTML form entry um, repository, and that's the workflow you would follow. The recommended work workflow you would follow for anyone else's modules. Um, so to get back. Um, Actually, I don't. I think that's basically what we needed to see here. Um, we've created a module, and we've shared it on GitHub. Um, is there anything about? Are there any questions or comments about creating creating this module and sharing it on GitHub? Anything about that that wasn't clear, or that I should go over again, or? Maybe point out anything I did wrong. Oops, I thought someone was typing something. So the question is, should you work in the directory where you created your project, or should you clone your GitHub repo into a new repo for working? Okay, so at some level, that's kind of the same question that Jeremy was asking. So I think it's a fair, something we should go over and make sure we're very clear about our recommendations for. Um, in my experience, um, with the modules I have created so far and pushed up to GitHub, um, and certainly if I have pushed it to my own account in GitHub, then, um, so, so in this case, since it's in my own GitHub account, I don't really have a choice. Um, if I had pushed this to github.com slash openmrs, you know, if I'd gotten permission to do that and shared it that way, um, I would have a choice about how to do this, but basically I would say that for a module that you have just created and you're going to be working on, um, you should do the work directly on, directly in the sort of in that module um, and just, you know, do your commits directly there and push them directly up to, basically I'm saying, what I'm saying is that you would have just a single remote for your local repository which would be origin and which would point to the main canonical place where the module lives on github um, so basically if you have just created a module your own module um, for the first time and you're doing your initial work there I'm ass assuming that you're gonna be the only one working on it at least for a while I would say 
just create you know create your local repository share that on github but just and just work there directly you don't need to then sort of then create a fork and then clone it um and and i think that's you know as you're as you do all the initial work on a module that's that's the right way to approach things once you start collaborating with others on the module it sort of depends if you're going to try to do the sort of s local or the small team approach where everyone's really in very close communications and you feel it's okay that you all sort of commit directly to the main repository um, that's that is an approach that can work in some circumstances, but generally speaking, not in the circumstances around OpenMRS, where pe typically people are remote from each other, they're in different time zones, they're not in, a, not in a good position to be able to coordinate minute by minute. So once you do start collaborating on a module, I would recommend that you, you do uh, basically, you know, let's, let's say that you know, after I've been working on this module for a week, I've got it, I'm ready now to, to share this with OpenMRS and start, you know, taking contributions from the rest of the community, what I would want to do is move this module into the OpenMRS organization instead of where I've got it now. And sort of the, you can do that. And, I mean, you would need, so in this case, I, I would need to contact OpenMRS code.openmrs or code at openmrs.org and you know say I want to use this module ID and and that I want to put this in openmrs's github um, and then there's a sort of transfer ownership command here under admin um, in github that will let me well that will that is the tool I would use for this um, going back uh, so what I'm where, what I was saying is that um, once I once I do want to start collaborating, I would want to move this module into an organization, and then um, I would probably want to do a fork of it myself and clone that fork to my machine, um, and and then I would want to start following the um, the sort of the the fork branch and pull request workflow as, as Jeremy described it. Does that answer your question, Roger, or were you asking something else? Okay. Any any other questions about about this approach and how uh, how it works, what to do? All right, seeing no further questions, I'm speaking to make sure there's none here. No, um, I'm going to stop the recording so that anyone who watches this on YouTube doesn't get 15 extra minutes of silence or and stop recording.